So firstly, I want to thank you for accepting my invitation and accepting to be on my show. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you for having me. So <laughs> I thought to introduce you to my audience. You want me to introduce myself? I want to. Uh, I thought to introduce you to my audience. So yeah. Can oh, you no, please no. introduce yourself to my audience? Yeah, sure. So my name's Luke, but I use the name La Biddle just because it's easier to find me on if you search that name up uh i write western fiction mainly i've written some horror as well um i did a guest post for someone the other day uh which you can find on my twitter and i'm still up and coming at the moment but i'm hoping to make it big one day um so that's pretty much it at the moment i'm hoping to get published soon i've written one novel but it's not out yet and I've also got a short story collection available on Amazon. Uh, it's called An Epitaph for Chaos. Where are from? Well, where I'm from. Uh, I'm from, from the UK. Yeah. You're yeah. from UK. Okay, so you're yeah. a full-time writer. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I do have a part-time job as well. Okay. Uh, I'm just a cashier, nothing special. Um, but I do also write quite a lot. I put quite a lot of hours into it, uh, especially on the weekend like this. I'll be doing some writing later. So yeah. So, so what what are the uh, you already said the genres that you write. So what what makes you to write uh, those genres and why you are only into those genres? So basically, I'll start with the Western genre. Um, I can get a way with putting themes in there that wouldn't really be acceptable in maybe a fantasy or just general fiction i can put more chaotic elements in it i can write gunfights or violence and it's more acceptable in that genre than it would be in maybe um just a general fiction or fantasy uh, as for horror uh, pretty much the same but I also grew up watching a lot of horror films as well. And I was inspired by people who uh, made those films and the writers behind them. Um, I'm not really a fan of some of the other genres, particularly romance. I just find it slow and it's just really not my thing um, at all. But uh, I do like fantasy. I just I don't think I'd have the patience writing and building a world um i like to write in an already established world so that's pretty much why i write in the genres i do so when did you start writing what made you to uh come into writing who inspired you what is your motivation uh so i started writing i would say about five years ago uh i would say my inspiration was quentin tarantino he wrote and directed quite a lot of films I liked and he made a film called Django Unchained that is set in the Wild West and uh, that really inspired me you know I even read the script to it and just his writing style yeah that's I would say that is what inspired me to write in the genres I do um, and I've always enjoyed it I've always enjoyed writing sentences and then editing it when I'm speaking out loud, I can't go back and edit what I said. But if I'm writing something, I can edit it and no one will know how rubbish it seemed before. So that's why I like writing. So what is the uh, time that you select to write in a day? At night, like okay. really late at night. That's when I write. I would say any time after midnight, it's quiet. I'm usually, strangely, I'm usually more energetic at that time. Um in the mornings I, I can't write in the mornings i will just fall asleep i i won't get anything done i've tried it i know there's a lot of motivational speakers who um suggest writing in the morning it's just not not for me at all <laughs> so yeah so uh so you write only fictional uh at the moment but i plan to write when I'm more well known, I plan to write some books about how to write certain types of characters. So 
a book I've got planned to write is um, how to write an anti-hero, which is basically a protagonist who's a bit more darker in nature and who's a bit more, I wouldn't say evil, but definitely not stereotypically good. So I'm planning to write a uh, how-to guide to write those sorts of characters, which uh, you find them a lot in the Western fiction, which is partly why I'm writing that. But that'll be a few months yet before I finish that. So uh, what is that, uh, what is that, that particular quality that is there in you that you don't find in any other authors? Sorry, what did you ask? Uh, what is the quality that is there in you while writing or while uh, putting uh, your thoughts in your book uh, that you won't find in any other authors and in their books? Oh. I'm going to try not to big myself up too much here. I would say the fact that my genre, there aren't many people writing in my genre, it's a lot easier for me to stand out and put sort of my personality into that and get uh, build an audience through that because there's just not that much competition. In fantasy, everyone's trying to write a fantasy. Everyone's trying to write a thriller. So it's really hard to stand out. But in Western particularly, and maybe even horror to an extent, it's a lot easier for me to write uh, characters with a similar personality to me in there. And it can stand out because there's just not that many other Western authors out there. Um, and that's partly why I'm drawn to writing in that category. And there are other Western books I've read. And they all seem completely different. And I think it's due to the authors who write them. They're from all around the world. Uh, I'm from the UK, so I've got a bit of a different style of writing than maybe someone would if they were in the United States. So, and people do find it unusual as well that I'm from the UK writing books set in the American West. They find that quite strange. But it's just, it's, a period of history I really enjoy. I really like uh, reading about it and watching films about it. So um, if nothing else, I think people at least find it interesting that a British author is writing in <laughs> the American West. Are you scared of dark? Am I scared of what? Dark. Like the dark or dark people? Yeah. I mean, the night. Uh, the night, no. No. I prefer the night. Um, I, I I feel more comfortable at night. You know, I, I know I don't fear the dark probably as much as I should. Um, if I'm out and about at night, I don't really get worried going down a dark alley or something. I probably should, but but if you mean, I, I thought you meant like bad people. Dark no, 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 no. Uh, just the dark. Yeah. Yeah. Abs no, absolutely not. I'm not afraid of the dark. I have a connected question with that. So that's why I asked. I have another question. Okay. Yeah. So you said you write about horror. So I want to know. Um, uh, I, I came to know that uh, 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 the people who write uh, horror, uh, they, they fear more. That is why the reason they can put that emotion and can create that emotion in the people who are reading their books. Oh, Until right. that list, yeah. I suppose that would make sense. Yeah, I, I don't really feel that fear, I suppose. So it's, I think that's why when I write horror, I have to draw inspiration from what other people have written. I have to ask people what they're scared of and what, because I know what I'm scared of. But it wouldn't really, it's more phobias for me. It's not really, um, I'm not really scared of stuff that I see as only existing in fiction. So when I watch a horror film, I can, I know it's fiction, so it doesn't really scare me watching it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So when I'm writing, I have to try and think, how can I make this realistic? so that people will actually be scared and or, or 
at least a bit feeling on edge um if i was making a film i would probably make more suspense so i would say there's a jump scare going to happen but you won't know when it's going to happen but in a book i can't do a jump scare you know um so it really is quite difficult creating fear using the atmosphere so like you said the dark but there's also um if you're if you're in somewhere that's really misty and you can't see you know maybe people will be scared because they think well anything could happen you don't know what's going to happen next but yeah um i would say that my fears don't really fit well in a horror film so i have to ask other people <laughs> do you think that the human is most uh, uh scared about things that are unknown than known yes yeah absolutely i think the unknown is 100% more scary than anything you could see realistically um you know even just going to a new place once you're there it could be the best place in the world but if you've never been there before it's that fear of the unknown um i think some people are more scared of that than others i think some people like to know everything that exists and they want to know everything and they really they really don't like not knowing stuff um if you picture like a it doesn't even have to be something that's uh related to horror it could just be a job interview you know people get really scared going into yeah. a job interview so um and that's when i write that's also things i implement a real world scenarios because people can relate to that yeah not people can't really relate to getting their hand cut off or something but they can relate to maybe going into an unknown place for the first time or being out at late um, in the dark so but yeah fear of the unknown i think's probably the best tool i can use to write in my to implement in my books um other than really using the atmosphere but if someone doesn't know what's going to happen next but they know something bad is going to happen next that is where people get uh that's what people relate to most that's why suspense is used in films they'll tell you a bomb's going to go off but you won't know when and that's what people are scared of they're not scared of the bomb going off it's they're scared that they don't know when it's going to go off so um yeah that's pretty much it so but without uh, without showing any visual or any uh, any picture or any anything which is uh, uh, which can be seen with the eyes is that uh, is that possible to create fear and make a person feel scared uh, with the words uh, uh, that is there in your collection i think it's easier if people have a good imagination uh if people can't really visualize situations in their head it's very difficult to create a sense of uh either fear in them or the opposite to get them really interested in the details of uh, an area if you're explaining a beautiful place or something if they can't imagine it it doesn't really it, it won't really have that reaction they won't really have that reaction as they would if they were watching a film so I, that's why i think a lot more people are drawn to watching films rather than reading because reading you kind of have to have a mind's eye you have to be able to visualize stuff in order to feel either fear or the opposite um joy or any other emotion when you when you're reading the words on the page uh you have to almost um i guess i'd say you 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 you'd have to almost kind of picture uh in detail what's going on and almost put your uh become the character that you're reading about uh which is hard for people in horror because they don't want to 
be in that situation so they don't want to visualize it so you have to kind of trick people it's really difficult writing horror i would say it's one of the most difficult things to write about because people just don't uh they don't want to visualize being in someone's shoes if they're in a really unpleasant or scary situation so it, yeah it's really tricky but if 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 with my writing I can trick someone into letting their guard down and they visualise they're somewhere and then uh, then have something scary happen, I think, you know, I've done well with my writing, but it's very difficult to do that. So I don't know how well I'm achieving that with my writing. Are, are you good in pulling uh, people into your world? It's easier with my Western genre writing because people are attracted to that sort of world. They're attracted to the chaos of it and the lovely landscapes and the desert and riding on horses. It's really easy to do it with the Western genre. With horror, I can't really pull people into that world unless they're uh, unless they kind of unless I I can trick them into it into thinking that you know oh this is a safe world and then something bad happens or um or it's someone who just really likes horror but general readers don't really don't really like horror unless there's well no i I would say general readers just don't really like horror to be honest so it has to be the right audience with Western, it's a lot easier to kind of pull people in who wouldn't really uh, be interested in Westerns otherwise. I can convince them that, oh, this is a great world. This is, you know, look at all I've written about. Look at the environment I've created. But in a horror, I just can't, conv- like horror, I can't convince them to visualise that world. It's a very specific audience who actually like horror. So where where this imagination is coming from, your imagination, are you good in visualizing things? Yeah, I I am quite good actually in visualizing things. Uh, It's strange because I've never really been to places similar to the places I write about. I've never been to the American West. So the way I visualize it is I have to watch films and I have to read other people's work. And I have to create my own image. Um, with horror, I have to kind of almost think, what's something bad that's happened to me times 10? You know, I have to kind of, and, it, and it's not a nice feeling. It's not nice kind of visualising um, horror. But if it creates a good story, you know, I'm willing to do it. But it's why I write a lot more in the western genre because it is nicer just to think about that world and imagine it and think about new towns and new characters and uh yeah so i would say i've got good imagination but that's not always a good thing because it means i can imagine pretty grim stuff as well to get that imagination will you collect the information using your senses from a particular places that you wanted, you select particular people to have that kind of an imagination when you're uh, when you're ready to write a particular genre book. Yeah. So when I write a book, first of all, I try and relate as much as I can to that book I'm writing. I try and experience it for myself first. But if I'm writing a Western, that's very difficult because I don't live anywhere near there. So I have to kind of absorb myself in a film or documentary set there. Um, And the people who I want to read my books, I have to think what will draw them in, what sort of thing will kind of entice them in, what can they relate to? It's very difficult. So I have to think, well, maybe I can have the character eat something that I've eaten before. And I describe that in detail. And someone who's reading will think, oh, I can relate to that. I've eaten 
that thing or I've you know I've heard this song before I could put a song in there and then when once they visualize that it's a lot easier for people to visualize the rest of the world but it's it is very difficult um I I sort of have to kind of make a lot of it up as well because there's only so much I could write from experience I have to kind of guess and imagine what would I think I would do in this situation or uh particularly if I'm I wrote a scene in one of my books where they have this really horrible drink that gives them hallucinations uh I can't really relate to that so I had to think what what would I think that would feel like so it might not be accurate but it's my best guess a lot of the time as well uh you collect the imaginations of different people in order to make uh, uh your imagination look better yeah um i found that sometimes if i watch a film or if i experience something others experience it completely different to me um uh, especially something that's got more adrenaline to it so if i'm doing something that i thinks really exciting and i'm getting loads of adrenaline from that someone else could feel fear from that so i think well maybe i could incorporate that into some some of my writing but uh reword it so that people feel fear even maybe if i wouldn't if the mass if the vast majority of people feel a certain way i even if it doesn't align with how i feel about something i will generally write to cater towards those people so um as you said earlier the fear of the unknown um it might be that i wouldn't necessarily fear uh going to a new place or something but i know a lot of people would so i write it so that uh people do feel fear uh even if it doesn't make sense to me reading it i know at least to other people uh they do feel the emotions that they tell me that they would feel in that situation so in a way when i write i don't really write for me i write for other people i write based on how they would feel not really how i would feel um but i usually make the protagonist similar to me just because it's easier but everything else about the books for for other people so you uh, who who the people are going to connect with your imagination uh do you mean like in my life or the readers reading my work yeah second one second one the reader um with horror as i said it's going to be a very specific audience it's just going to be people who like horror um with western it's a bit easier i can draw people in who might be interested in fantasy and so i would think why do they like fantasy maybe it's because of the world they like the vivid descriptions of the world so i add that to my western book i will put more descriptive features of the world because i know people who like fantasy might like that and then people who like thrillers might like uh more action scenes or adrenaline so i write those scenes in so i write enough to cater to everyone uh except for as i said romance i don't do romance really it's not my skill i've not tried it um so yeah there's no like romance scenes in there um but pretty much everything else i've got scenes that will be enjoyed by different types of people um but that's for my western for, for my horror it it i i can't draw people in if they don't want to imagine that world do you know what i mean i i can't i can't make someone 
enjoy a horror if it's just not their thing even if i do all the world building and all the vivid descriptions i possibly can if they don't like getting scared and they don't like the fear aspect it's not going to work so with my horror i just make it so that um just horror the just the horror audience like it really and maybe people from darker fiction but yeah it's it's much easier with the western genre to actually get different people to like my work than it is with horror are you good in playing with the minds of the people are you good in playing with the human psyche um I, uh, that depends um well when i'm when i'm writing I, I would like to think i'm good at writing in such a way that i can make people imagine that scene a certain way or they i can make someone like a specific character and dislike another character but um i can't make people enjoy something that they wouldn't otherwise enjoy so i have to put things into my work that, that they will actually enjoy and then hopefully they will enjoy the rest of the book because they're already kind of hooked so i i need multiple hooks in my work for different types of people and hopefully they will then enjoy the rest of the book after that but no i can't really play with people's minds i don't think i wish <laughs> but i don't think so so people who read your book uh what did what did they say you know what uh, uh made them uh what uh, is the quality of yours or or a particular point of yours that you said in your book have uh, stopped the moving their uh, eyeballs yeah uh I, gen- i i generally get told that i'm really good with dialogue most of the time again it depends what genre i'm writing in i've tried writing in other genres before and i'm not as good with the dialogue because i'm i'm very good at what i know but i'm not good at things that just aren't uh in my interest but if we take like my western genre people tend to like the dialogue they like the suspense and they like the action in it they like the pacing as well and also the just the grammar and the punctuation a lot of readers um can get distracted by bad grammar and punctuation and i'm quite specific with that i make sure i thoroughly edit that so just because it's easier to read and it's easy for people to enjoy the content of the book um so that's the positives i've got um i've been told that sometimes especially in the past i've been told that i don't always add enough uh imagery i don't always use all the senses in my work but i've fixed a lot of that now i do that a lot more but in the past i used to kind of have the image in my head and forget to tell everyone else what that image was so i'd kind of forget to describe the world in detail because i'd almost assume that everyone could see it the same way i did but uh nowadays i do put a lot more imagery in so generally i get good feedback i would i would say i'm sure there's someone who's going to absolutely despise everything i've written and that's fine I, i'd almost hope that happens because <laughs> i'd be very worried if everyone liked my horror for example <laughs> but um yeah generally i get good feedback you said uh, you select uh, night uh, times uh uh to write uh, your imagination so these imaginary characters that you that you create are they intense um yeah i would say so i would say they're very um 
it's strange when I write my characters I don't base them off people I know which a lot of writers do that they base them off people they know um it sounds harsh but I can't imagine people in my personal life fitting in well in horror or western I imagine them so I have to come up with very intense characters almost from my imagination um so they will also be quite conflicting so my protagonist is quite or in my short story collection I've got multiple protagonists and they all kind of are different to each other and there are certain stories where they meet each other and they complete they're completely different uh some of them can be very uh violent very kind of like almost psychopathic and then others can be quite easygoing um and i've got some that are quite fearful especially secondary characters um i almost make my secondary characters a hindrance to the protagonist so i can create conflict between them my secondary my secondary characters are usually scared or they're anxious or they don't want to do it or i think they represent most people in that situation um you're you're not really meant to um empathize with the protagonist you're meant to kind of see yourself as the secondary character because that represents most people i think the protagonist is usually quite headstrong and sure of himself and almost a bit arrogant and it's a good way for me to create conflict by making these intense characters meet each other and they're on the same side there's often uh there's there's often conflict going on and even fights and violence they're not always on the same side if you know what i mean uh creating something that uh, that is not existed before and creating something that is not there and creating something that that uh, they didn't know or they didn't saw or they didn't imagine you trying to make them connect with the the creations of yours how effective yeah. you are how effective you are in creating impact um i've got better at it as as with each story i write i get better at it it's it's as i say it's very difficult to do that it's very difficult to have that impact um different authors approach it in different ways um you might have heard of method acting there's also like method writing where you almost you become that character um i can do that with certain characters but with others i just have to almost guess what i think people will connect to most um so even if i've got a character who's nothing like me who i wouldn't get on with um i have to think what most people would enjoy reading about so it's difficult for me because i um i have to rely on other people almost i have to get other people's perspectives of uh sometimes i will edit my entire book or my entire story just based off how someone perceived something i've written they might have seen one of my protagonists as the antagonist they might think they're a horrible person or vice versa they might think the antagonist was too soft and was too um was too friendly or or not evil enough so really i have to rely on other people to uh invoke the emotions i want to um so it's extremely difficult but i think i'm getting better as my writing gets on i think i'm achieving that a lot more that impact i hope <laughs> so you write to create an emotion you 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 uh, the intention of yours is to create uh, the the emotions that you have you wanted uh, uh, the reader to feel the same emotion so you have to yeah. be uh, uh, the the great uh, emotion generator uh with uh with uh, the the communicating uh words that you have so 
so how good you are in that <laughs> well it depends what emotion it is it really does uh there are certain situations where i have to rely heavily on what someone else would experience and just hope that people will uh relate to it because it might not be something i'd relate to so if there's some sort of scene where there's a lot of adrenaline going on there's a lot of action i'm quite good with those scenes i'm quite good at uh, thinking of something from my past and incorporating that but if there's like a sadder scene that I might not have the patience to kind of imagine how I would how that emotion would feel especially with other people trying to relate to those characters I really do have to uh, ask someone else's opinion and I'd say how would you react to this and the thing is people react differently so i have to kind of com- uh, compromise almost i have to write something that i think that is realistic but also um that most people could relate to in some way i don't think everyone's going to relate to certain emotions the exact same way anyway I think people enjoy certain things more than others. So some people will enjoy the sadder scenes more than they would the action scenes. Um, But at the end of the day, I just have to kind of do what I think the majority would enjoy and what the majority could relate to. Um, So there's kind of a structure I use to do that. Um, Because if I wrote purely for me, there would be too much action, too much adrenaline and not enough of anything else. And people just can't really um, always relate to just one intense emotional state when they're reading. They People like breaks and people like variety. So I have to kind of ask different people. Uh, but I think... I think I'm doing okay now, at least compared to how I used to write. But it's still a struggle for me, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, anything pure create impact? Anything which is real create impact? Yeah. So, uh, so for me, if I want to create an impact of, on someone. I will want someone to feel a really intense adrenaline or fear or or excitement even, whereas other people want to read a really sad paragraph. Uh, they want that impact. They kind of want to relate more to the characters through sadness as well. So I try and create that impact, even if I wouldn't want to read about it, I know that a lot of others would, so I, that's how I write. I write thinking of what others would like as well, as well as just what I'm good at writing. Um, so there's a lot of compromise. Uh, what do you think that force is working on you to make uh, things work? What do you mean exactly? There is a force that is making you to do uh, put your imagination outside and make people to connect with it. What is that? I th- I think what it is is um, I'm kind of drawn to the lifestyle people had, particularly in the Wild West, and I'm kind of I almost want to relive it. If I can't relive it in real life, I can relive it through the words I write you know i can relive it in my imagination and i kind of want to share that with other people i want other people to relive a kind of chaotic lifestyle without having the danger of living that way in real life you know you can almost live through gunfights in your head but in real life one wrong move and you could die do you know what i mean so but through my books people can relive chaotic uh events and horse races and gunfights and 
um, you know, being an outlaw and they can live through all that just through their imagination in their home. And I think that's what I like about writing is that I, it, it's easy for me to live the life I want without having to deal with the consequences. Uh, same with horror as well. I can write the most evil scene possible, but because it's just fiction, it's, it, it's, uh, there's no consequences to that. Uh, not that I would really want to live through a horror experience in real life, but, through fiction it's it's quite enjoyable uh, which is why people watch films as well they want to relive an action film or they want to live through something um without having to deal with that in real life so i think that's what draws me to writing these uh these stories and these novels pretty so, much what is what is the thing that is uh that is making people to be connected with uh, your expression? Um, I think it depends on the person, which, like I say, I have to write things for different readers. I, there has to be something in there that different people can relate to. So some people will just want to imagine being in a vast, expanse, uh, expansive, unexplored uh area you know people people might want to just imagine being in the desert or imagine being in huge grasslands or just roaming around um others might want to live through the action and they might which is that's how i think as well personally i like to relive that the action and the adrenaline so I hope people, some people will be drawn in through that. Um, and then there's others who just kind of want to learn more about the history. People just kind of want to go back in time almost. And that's not possible in real life, but through fi- fiction, particularly if it's accurate to how the past was, um, people can kind of explore that world. Uh, how life used to be um so yeah i hope different people find different things that they enjoy and that they're drawn to um that's my goal anyway uh, before making people uh, uh to connect uh, with uh, the invisible characters of yours with uh, the image with the imagination of yours so you 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 are feeling it you are connecting with it so what is the environment that you select in order to get kind that kind of a imagination and thinking and that powerful thoughts um it has to be something that people haven't really experienced in their day-to-day lives when i write i think what's something that people may never get to experience in real life what sort of environments can i create that people wish they could visit or or maybe not even they wish they could visit but they're just intrigued by it so with horror people don't want to be in that environment but they're kind of curious what it would be like being in a really misty woodland or something but they they wouldn't dare do it in real life but they're interested how they would feel and it's a lot safer to read for, about that than do it in real life. So I write environments that people almost uh, have to guess how they would react and um, they have to guess if they, what sort of emotions they would feel because they would never feel that in their day-to-day lives. So I wouldn't, for example, write about being stuck in traffic or being in a nine to five office job. No one wants to read about that (laughs) unless a bomb goes off downstairs and then there's someone figuring out who set off the bomb. There's no fun otherwise just in day to day life. So I write my books. I write them to be as different from my life as possible. Um, and I kind of write them so that people aren't reminded of their struggles in their life. So I don't 
right i don't add in things that will distract people from the fiction and will remind them of their day-to-day lives so i won't add in uh any stresses like e- even like medical stuff i don't usually add anything that I, I don't add terminal diseases that people you know if people read about cancer they might know someone who's got cancer so i just if there's anything um i'm more likely to write about a gunshot wound because no no one's really gonna have that experience in real life and if they are why are they reading my book and not getting treatment for it (laughs) so yeah i i write uh, mainly to distract people from the real world which i hope i'm doing that well you uh, revisit uh, the imagination of yours after completion of that book um well with a lot of my books that i do i'm planning sequels set in this in either that environment or a similar environment so i have to remember a lot of the places i've made uh, a lot of the towns uh come back over and over again because i think if i create a world and then never use it again <laughs> i think that it's quite a lot of effort building up a world so once i've built up a world in my mind i like to use it as much as possible because it is tricky to imagine new places a lot so i kind of rely on places i've already imagined and just to add to that maybe i create new characters in there or um a new building that's not been explored before or something you know new in the same environment so yeah a lot of my locations a lot of my world my imagination it gets revisited from and i'm planning uh, new books as well that revisit the same places that there are also different places um Hello. 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 Yeah, yeah, we got connected. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh my Wi-Fi cut out for a second there. Okay. But it's back now. It's fine. Um I'm not sure at what point it cut out, but pretty much summed up what I was saying is that um, I I like to revisit that imagination and use it again. um, Because once I've already established something in my mind, I don't want to then waste it and only use it once, if you know what I mean. But I also realise that people want to visit new places in my work as well so there's a bit of a variety there between familiarity and new places uh, what is the change that you observed in yourself uh, after putting uh, different imaginations of yours out uh what do you mean by that like how different i books are out different books yeah. out so yeah. one one is different with other from other yeah so are you asking how i what is the change that you are observing in yourself in my um the more because, i write the, because your yeah. your thoughts are already out yeah so what um, is the change now it, it was it's it's easier to write now that I've already put stuff out there than it was when I was first writing. I didn't want anyone to read my work. I was scared. I didn't want criticism, either good or bad. I just, I wanted to write something, read it. And that was a weird kind of place to be. But now that I've already written stuff, I kind of feel like there's no point stopping now. It's all or nothing, to be honest. It's either I don't do anything or I go for it 100%. 
so it's a lot easier with everything I write to be more confident especially and I think confidence makes better writing so it's kind of a good cycle really um there's a novel I've fully written that's not out yet and I'm hoping it will be published through the traditional route and to prepare for that I actually wrote seven short stories that are available um so I have I had no idea how people would react to them and I thought I've already written this novel and if people don't like the short stories they're not going to like the novel either so I was worried but now that it's out there and I've also done guest posts for blogs and stuff so uh, I'm I'm more confident now in in my writing and I think that makes my writing better as well that I'm not worried about what people are going to think anymore so hopefully subsequent work from me is just going to be slowly getting better and better I hope so I'll put your uh, books links in the description of this video people who find our video on YouTube they can find the links yeah thank you yeah I'll send you the links to I've got my Twitter I've got my book my short story collection an epitaph for chaos which is out on amazon it's only an ebook it's not paperback but i just wanted people really to just give me some sort of opinion without having to spend a load of money getting a paperback i just wanted to put it as cheap as i could so people could just let me know what they think so i've got that and then there's one other thing i've got a, a guest post which is the horror that we were talking about and that I only wrote that less than a week ago actually so that's still fairly new um so it's still early days yet to get feedback so yeah those links would if anyone's interested check those out and there'll be more to come soon as well so at last uh, what do you say about uh, my questioning and uh, my videos on youtube yeah, it's good. You know, I found out about you from, uh, do you know P.L. Stewart? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's how I found out about you. So I watched that interview and that was really enjoyable. I watched the whole thing and then I scrolled through and I saw you've interviewed all sorts of people, like um, military people and other authors as well. I thought you've interviewed half the world here. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so I think your questions were good. I liked answering them. Um, I struggle a lot with talking, like getting my words out. That's partly why I like writing, because I can edit stuff. I can't edit how I speak. So, but I think you made it a lot easier for me to speak my mind. So that's, uh, I'm appreciative of that. So thank you for that. Can I put this video on my YouTube channel? yeah absolutely yeah that's fine um and i hope anyone who does watch um will subscribe to you as well because uh you've got plenty of other great uh videos on here and better authors than me on here so uh uh but i am appreciative of this and yeah absolutely you can put it wherever you want <laughs> Can I can I put this video and audio clip on my social media, internet, podcast, website, everywhere with your permission? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be happy for you too. So uh, I'll talk with you again when once uh, your book is out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll let you know. I'll let you know if I do get traditionally published. Pit Mad, which is on June the third. So I'll let you know how that goes. Um, yeah. Thanks again for this opportunity. It's been great. Uh, I'll speak to you soon. So thanks for giving me opportunity to talk with you. Absolutely, any time. We'll do it again sometime. <laughs> Take care. And you.